Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and this is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between not seeing the show and seeing it. It's the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. This is The Twilight Zone. The show has just dropped its second episode in a Jordan Peele reboot titled Nightmare at 30,000 Feet and the episode has a lot to unpack from it. Throughout this video I'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about Nightmare and its ending. This is full spoilers ahead so if you haven't seen it yet then I highly recommend that you turn off now. With that out the way, thanks for clicking the video and let's dive into my ending explained breakdown of Nightmare at 30,000 Feet. Nightmare at 30,000 Feet is of course a riff on the infamous Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. That episode starring William Shatner followed a man who, after witnessing a gremlin on the wing of the plane, almost brought the entire object to the ground. However, no one believed him due to the gremlin hiding and at the end of the episode Shatner's character was deemed insane and escorted off. His fears were confirmed though and the audience were given confirmation that the events in it happened when they saw the ripped fuselage of the plane. It's arguably the show's most infamous episode and has been parodied in The Simpsons, Ace Ventura and more. The episode has even already been remade for the 1983 movie and it's clear that this has a pretty big following. However, it's never really been one that I enjoyed all that much. Perhaps due to the fact that when I saw it I'd already seen the parodies countless times and this just seemed laughable due to Shatner's betrayal of panic. Like most fans though I was naturally intrigued upon news of a 2019 remake of the episode but the new one is quite dissimilar in many ways. This is probably a wise choice given the parodies and it's arguably the smartest way to go with it. Similar to the original episode we follow a passenger who attempts to save what he believes is a doomed flight. However there is no monster this time, the man is facing off against something bigger, fate itself. The episode is packed with easter eggs such as an image of Samir at the height of his comedic fame, there's a toy that resembles a gremlin from the original, Captain Donner is a nod to Richard Donner and overall it feels more a part of the Twilight Zone universe. So what about the plot itself? Well, Justin Sanderson, our protagonist, is a PTSD suffering journalist that has taken a job in Tel Aviv. Justin is used to war reporting, having previously visited Yemen, and though his wife attempts to dissuade him against it, he still goes. Like most travellers of the modern age, Justin puts on a podcast and sits back to listen to its intriguing story which centres around the mystery of Northern Gold Star Flight 1015. This podcast recounts the disappearance of a plane, but there's just one big problem. Justin is in the Twilight Zone and therefore he's on Northern Gold Star Flight 1015. Justin becomes increasingly paranoid and as the podcast goes on it gives more and more confirmation that he's on the doomed flight. Justin does whatever he can throughout the episode to attempt to divert the plane from destiny. He stops a sports fan from streaming a game and confronts a man that he believes is a member of the Russian mob. Justin is desperate to fight his fate no matter how unhinged he looks or becomes. It's clear that he has poor mental health due to his encounters with the wars he's faced and it becomes increasingly more evident that this may just be a form of psychosis. There's also Joe, a mysterious man who reassures Justin that he is correct in his suspicions. On second watch, this mysterious man seems to be quite strange and if the mental health diagnosis that I've given is correct, then Joe could merely be a hallucination that Justin sees to justify his actions. Whilst I've seen some articles confirm that Joe is real because on the the way to the cockpit people interact with him, this could be a manifestation of him taking over Justin's body and Justin is resigned to watch it play out because he's a passenger. Joe is never seen with the survivors so this holds a lot of weight for me. Anyway Justin's worst fears are confirmed and eventually the plane does disappear through Joe, though it becomes clear that in trying to avoid his fate Justin actually caused it to happen. He wakes up washed up on a beach and after noticing survivors he's initially relieved. However he soon notices how the other passengers are looking at him and after seeing his podcast player he rushes to it to discover that all of the passengers were discovered except for him. The passengers turn on him and ultimately this ending can be seen as a comment on how society deals with mental health. They may appear to initially tolerate it but eventually they will be put into a situation that causes them to judge. It's a smart ending that feels more in line with today's standings and whereas in the original Shatner's character was vindicated, Justin seems to be a victim of his own paranoia and fear that eventually causes him to fall by the rulings of society. Overall this is a message of fate versus free will and it argues that the two could perhaps 
perhaps have more in common with each other than we would like to believe. Justin had the free will to simply turn off the podcast, but the choices he made ultimately led him down the path that he was trying to escape from. I much prefer this episode to the premiere, and hopefully the rest of the season is like this. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode, and if you preferred it to the first one. Comment below and let me know, and if you enjoy this video, then make sure you like it and check out my breakdown of the comedian from this series, which will be linked at the end. This is a channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.